Hello, everyone. Well, guys, I have no idea. Uh, I knocked the camera over, turning the lights on. That's the reason I'm late. Did I? Did I also schmutch it? Because maybe I did. Maybe I stuck my finger on the lens. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. It's Tuesday, the something in April sometime. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I'm getting better sleeps at night, but I am still, uh, I would not say I am well rested at this point. Uh, I am thoroughly enjoying my new assistant, though. Um, Merrick and I both are. We are having a great deal of fun. Uh, he loves the snow. He's growing like a weed. Um, and uh, thank God he naps. That's all I can say. Most of the time when he naps, I nap. So that's having an impact on how much I actually get done during the day. But hey, survival first. So while I wait for everything to catch up to each other, just waiting for the comments to come on. Um, I was ready for the Zoom this time. I try, I did try to go the other way, but it, it wouldn't let me in. Um, and then as I'm trying to do this, I, I remembered to turn off the sound, but then I thought, oh, I forgot to turn on the lights and knock the camera over in the process of turning on the lights. So one of these times I'm gonna get it all figured out, but it will not let me have comments tonight. Why will it not let me have comments tonight? Just because that would be too easy? There we go. Hello, Jennifer, you are very welcome for the birthday card. So fun fact for you, Jennifer, your birthday is the same day as my son's birthday, which also turns out to be the same day as the birthday of the mother of Rascal, our new puppy. So Lilo is her name. And she was also born on the same day as you guys. So how's that for fun? All righty. Oh, look at that. It's already 608. Okay. I have, and, and I'm trying the later time again, just to see if, see if this works for more people. Um, uh, doesn't work for Rascal. Apparently he, he wants to be heard. He doesn't actually bark very much, um, but he does get annoyed if you are not fast enough to, um, to do his bidding or if you put him up on a, on the, like the couch or something with you. Yes. He's allowed on the couch. Um, and then if you get up and forget him because he can't jump down yet, then he gets very annoyed because now he can't follow you along, around. Um, yes. Yes, you are in good company, Jennifer. Okay. So rambling over. Did I say, hey, it's Tracy, paper pusher? Nice to be here. <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to... Just a minute. I got two different cameras going. That's throwing me off. They're not synced. If they were synced, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. So these are, slimline cards have been out for a little bit. They were all the rage, I don't know, a year or two ago. And when they first came out, um, Stampin' Up! didn't have envelopes for them. I do not have them close enough to grab. So a lot of people were just making slimline cards and then you can, you can uh, make your own. I should have done that. I should have made an off size for you, but uh, maybe I'll do that between now and Saturday and I'll put this, the information in the blog with the rest of the measurements. Um, but you could make your your card, whatever size you wanted it to be, and just make a, an envelope out of DSP. Or a lot of people were just buying like business type envelopes, the letter envelopes. And there's two sizes I noticed. One's a little bit smaller. And then there's like the full, like if you fold up a piece at eight and a half by 11, um, like the letter size that a company would use. So either one of those worked as well. But then Stampin' Up, always on trend, came out with these very pretty, if I do say so myself, these very pretty envelopes for doing slim line. And look at this, they have lovely patterns. So there's white ones, there's soft succulent. I think the pattern on the inside is the same on all of them, but I got to double check. Different color, but same pattern. That was the same pattern, wasn't it? Yep. And then smoky slate. So basic white, soft succulent, smoky slate. Now it does not matter that there's only um, three colors, because as I as you will see, you can make them work for just about anything. You can make the envelopes pretty, but really they're still envelopes. So if they're not exactly the same, that's fine. Uh, you get them a package of 15. So you get five of five each of the three different colors is how they come. So you get a nice little variety. And quite honestly, when you hold the card or when you hold the envelopes like this, it makes me think 
just a good color scheme for a card. So, so those are the envelopes. And these envelopes are, because I wrote it down so I would remember, uh, three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. So just shy of four by nine. So they do work well to put bigger cards in. Now, I know you're asking yourself, but Tracy, why would I want a bigger card? Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> just let me, oh, there we go. I buried my trimmer underneath my cut and emboss machine and that was not gonna end well. Um, well I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Okay, so I, I think there's a couple of reasons why you would wanna do this. Now, grad season is coming. So you wanna make some grad cards. Now I did post a grad card yesterday using this little, the cute little sailboat punch. And I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm trying to lean into making some simpler cards. Like not every card has to be as complex as I tend to make it. I do love to play. And so I do tend to put a little bit on there, but I thought, no, I can make some simple ones too. So I made the card yesterday, which <laughs> it was only yesterday. Of course, it's still on my desk. I mean, a week from now, I'll say the same thing, but so this is the card I made yesterday. Ta-da. Um, and it was made with those specific colors because of the color challenge. But I just, I loved how simple it was and I loved the way these little punches worked. So then today I was trying to make the point for the slimline card that you do not have to have a ton of decoration on them. Yes, they are a bigger card. You do not have to have a ton of decoration on them. So I sort of reworked that one. I was curious about this last night or when I made that other card. Um, this, this cool water stamp, if you stuck it behind, but on the other card, it was, the stamp was too big. And so I thought, oh, this is the perfect time to try it. So really, I didn't put a ton of decorations on here. And I still think it looks awesome if I do say so myself. But the reason I made this card this size is for the pocket on the inside. Now, I'll show you on the other one because um, I forgot to take it out. But hey, it's grad season. It's money season, right? That's a great grad gift to fund their, their first apartment, their college, their trip, their celebration, whatever you want. So there's one card. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's a great reason for making these as money cards. Another good reason for making them <clears throat> is sometimes it is just because you have like big decorations and you want, just a minute, I got those backwards. Um, and, you, and you don't want them to look as squished. So I love this sports suite. I made a little tassel on here. I think I had a lot of fun with that. Um, Actually, I'll show you how to make those if you need. Um, I love this sports suite with these big flags and banners and there's big tickets and everything that go on here. And, and they're fairly, um, thank you, Jennifer. They're fairly, they're fairly good size. Like the tickets, oh, I put them away. I actually put those ones away. Um, they're fairly good size die cuts. Um, here's one of the tickets. This doesn't actually match this card or anything. And then the, the main ticket's even bigger. So if you try to cram too many of them on a, on one card, they, they can get pretty full and then you cut off too many of the things. But I liked this. I thought this was a cool idea as a, like this is on grad day, you know, it's happy day, you're celebrating number one, best day, you're the, you know. So I like this idea, but this works way better spread out on a slimline card than it does crammed into a regular size card. And again, it's a money card. So in this case, I actually put DSP and I will tell you that I went through a great deal of thought on the inside of this card. I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. I realize now I forgot to stamp on here. Um, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I put it so that I, I put the DSP and I put a little bit of it down behind the pocket, but I made it so that you didn't have this green line in the middle on the edge of the pocket, right? So it just kind of blends. Now, I just did that because I thought it would be cool. <laughs> you could easily cut a piece to put behind here and then cut a smaller strip here and have that little green line. That works as well. Um, I went through, do I put, um, like, should I put a, a piece of cardstock here so you can write on it here if you wanted to write something on it? Um, if this was your own kid, would you just write a little bit or would you write a lot? Because this is like your own kid graduating, going out in the world. Um, I thought about putting a piece of, like, just, this is very vanilla, this paper. So this is actually very vanilla, but like putting a piece up here so you could write on here, but then the, the front's not flat, right? So, because I, because I like dimensional, as you can see. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. So what I ended up doing uh, or came up with, and like I said, I forgot to stamp this, was there's a piece of card here. So you can write a little bit on the front, keep it simple if you want. You don't have to put anything on it at all if you don't want to. Um, and if you're really verbose, you can write on both sides. So this fits in here. 
and then as well, uh, the money fits in and you can put it before. I like this, that it's peeking out from behind the card, but it's not like, hey, it's money. Um, so that works as well. <clears throat> so again, this one I also made as a money card, but um, but yeah, just sometimes you have lots of big decorations you wanna get done with. And then, oh, sorry, sorry, I'll leave these up for now. And then I think the other reason you do it is just because it's a little more special. I don't know why that card is no longer sitting flat. It was sitting flat before. It's just somehow it's not now and it's bugging me. Um, sometimes you just want to go a little extra special, I guess, and you want to make a bigger one. I snapped the outside of that card envelope too. Um, and I saw this card online and I was instantly in love with this card. So this card, I have moved my piece of paper with the lady's name on it. It was by a lady named Lena. Lena Gersa. Uh, she is a Canadian demo, I believe in Ontario. And she made this card. Now, the only thing I, I changed on it is I put a different, hers had a different banner, um, different label here and her said, thank you, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm all about the birthday cards right now. So I was making birthday cards. But other than that, I pretty much copied her heart. Now, the reason I wanted to make this card tonight, other than the fact that it is just gorgeous, is, um, I know, isn't it, Jennifer? It's a wow for sure. Is, do you notice that this is six by six DSP? <clears throat> so this DSP came from a 12 by 12 sheet. This one came from a six by six sheet. But if you're determined to use something, you will find a way. And I think she found a cool way to do this. So yeah, this I, I, I kept this six feet wide, or six feet, <laughs> that's a big card. I kept this six inches wide. I kept the full six inches. And then I just cut this down just enough that I could put a little a little um, mat on it. And then, yeah, she had just used a couple pieces here. Now, the this is from this is going away now. This stuff's about to retire. And I don't know. I love this wood grain paper. I might have to get some more, but um, in good taste, the big pack that's it's actually one of the few packs that I've ever carried over. It's been in the last two catalogs. So this was just like kind of covering up the edge a little bit. And because the gate is made out of ooh, I'll try to hold that steady. Um, I cut the gate out of the same paper, so it's wood, so it kind of ties it all together. But you could also just stamp, or you could also just have like the middle. I mean, this paper's so gorgeous, it stands alone. But isn't that a cool card? And in this case, um, I didn't make it into a uh, money card. I just, it's just a card. Now, I will be making a whole bunch of these, <clears throat> and I can't give you too many details until the people getting them get them. But the reason I'm choosing to make this size for what I need to do is Let's ignore the fact that this is for a townwide garage sale because <laughs> that was just so I could remember and be ready for it. But let's imagine I have stuff to tell people and I need to do it on a on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. But I don't want to just send it like this. I want to send it like this, right? I'll, I'll actually fold it properly when I'm paying attention, but I'll fold it so it fits. <laughs> so I just figured this is a much prettier way to deliver a piece of paper. It's an invite, but it has to have like the there needs to be information on the invite, so that's that's why. And and if you fold it properly, which I did not, like I said, you can make that fit in there. So lots of cool reasons I think for why you would want to make a slimline card. Um, I got to tell you, as much as this card is just like gorgeous and pretty, I am totally in love with this sailboat right now. This little punch, <laughs> and and that's all I did. I the the stamp and the sorry the sentiment and the water are from the same set and I just stamped those. These are two of our new dies. Ooh, I've got a comparison for you. I'll give you the teaser. We have a new set of dies coming out. And I thought I'm gonna compare them to the stitch shape dies because those are super popular. Um, and people are gonna wonder, is it the same? No, it's not. These new dies, oh my goodness, there's so much more to them. So there's this, this, and this, but look at how many circles you get with it. And so this is the new circles and the old circles together. So you can kind of see that they're they're almost the same size, but not quite. So they're so they're not like you're gonna like get both and use them together because they're too close together. But look at this. That's how many circles though. Stunning. So that's all it is. I cut this out of one circle die, this out of one circle die, punch the punch out with the builder punch, which ah, does everything for you. I got I got some reflections going. There we go. So I would have put it this way. Um, with the punch and boom. Love these cards love them. I'm not even a sailor, like sailboat sailor, but I, I love this card. So there we go. So there's our three that I, samples that I showed you. But what you're probably wondering is, well, great, but how do I make one? 
So I'm assuming there's <laughs> many ways to make one. Um, what I'm going to tell you, though, is how I figured out, like the measurements and what I think works for those ones. So like I said, the, the envelope is just shy of four by nine, a regular piece of paper, eight and a half by 11. So what I have figured out, the easiest way to do it to not waste too much paper, but to be able to put a layer on it or to bump up some things or tie a piece of ribbon on or whatever and still have it fit in the envelope nicely, is to take your paper and I'm going to put the like the samples of the pictures and I will put all the different dimensions for all the different layers and everything in my blog on Saturday. It's just easier to do it that way. Um, you'll also see that I like to uh, I like to cut the easy way. Um, let me move this so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. So I just scored this at three and a half. Now what I want is a piece that is um, is uh, nine by eight and a half. Oh hi Jen. But what I don't like to do is I don't like to have to swing the arm out on my cutter, and that's usually because um, I don't usually have enough desk space to do it. So I have found other ways around. So I scored this end, and then I flipped the paper around, and now I'm going to cut a two inch strip off of here. And this is great because this just makes labels and other things. And then I'm gonna go down another, I'm gonna put it back at two inches again. And this time I'm going to score it at two inches. So what I've ended up with is a piece of paper that is seven, what did I just say? Nine by eight and a half. Now, if you didn't want the money flap, I automatically put the money flap in because I'm going to do it a different direction and just show you. But um, but if you don't want the money flap, then you just need this to be seven by eight and a half. And if you cut a seven by eight and a half card, you have lots of room left to use the piece you cut off to make this this layer, like the white layer. Lots. That was just I just made that from the piece I cut off, right? It would work just perfectly there. So I'm going to try. I just used the piece of paper I was not supposed to use. Um, two, three, four, five. That's not going to be the right size. Stand by one. I wasn't. I was. Uh, I was miscalculating my money flap. Just a minute. No, I'm coming back. <laughs> so luckily, my paper's not too far away. You're wondering where did she go? Okay. So I did want to make a layer because I had the thought, but I didn't have time to practice or not practice, but test this thought ahead of time. So I thought we're gonna do the testing part live. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut off of a different piece of card top since I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Um, like I said, I hate to have to fold the arm out. So this piece of paper is eight and a half and I need it to be eight and a quarter. So I will do anything to not have to unfold that arm. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just gonna take my little quarter off. Oh, hello, Nikki. Okay, so here's what we've ended up with. I, I, I got the long way to get there, but we got there in the end. So I have this piece, which is eight and a half, the regular size that we start with by nine. I just cut the two inch strip off. And then I've scored it at two inches from one end, three and a half from the other. And I'm going to fold. This is the, the thick whisper white cardstock. And uh, if you want to sell a bone folder, um, just get them to try to crease whisper this thick cardstock without one. Oh, you know what I did? Nope, that'll work still. So you remember at the beginning how I mentioned I wasn't totally sleep deprived? I am still somewhat sleep deprived. Um, so this is, I don't know if I can change it. Oh, no, I can. I can do it this way. Just I was thinking the right way. Okay, so when I made these other money holders, I'm talking to myself. You'll all catch up with it. I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on the whole thing. So when I made these money holders, I made them so that the money would fit in this way. But I figure every card I make, I make the same way. Um, and what I really should do is make one that goes vertical because the slimline cards can be made vertical as well. So there you go. So I did, I did score it right, I just folded it wrong. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so when you open the card this way, you can write here and stash your money there. So like I said, when I do the blog, on Saturday, I will put all these measurements in again. So if I've just confused everybody, I apologize, but I will fix it. Okay, so I'm just putting tear and tape on these two ends. Uh, when I made one earlier, I, I love tear and tape, right? And I'm so used to tear and tape 
using it on everything to fasten everything down that I just about put tear and tape on this side. So I would recommend not doing that. Um, just because if you do that, then you're going to tape it shut and it won't actually be useful for you. So this is just my little flap. Now, I should really plan out far, farther in advance to know how the whole card's going to go. Because if I wanted to stamp on the inside, I really should stamp before I fold. But I don't think I'm going to stamp on this side. And if I do, it'll just be like on this flap. A minute here, let me get my money. I can't find out which card my money is in. There we go. So there you go. See, and I think because this is big enough, I, I don't think the money's going to fall out. You don't want to give somebody something and ha have them open it up and it fall on the ground. So that's why I made this a two inch lip when I made it on the other one as well. So I think there's lots of room for this to open up and not fall out. Now, <clears throat> the, one, the one finish I didn't do on the other one was embossing. And given that our embossing folders max, max out at six inches, you're probably thinking, well, I can't, I can't have an embossed layer on my card because none of our embossing folders are that big. And you would be correct. But you can, oh, there we go. Yeah, believe it or not, I had no idea what I did with my little machine. Um, but you can, you can use like your embossing folder, emboss half of the card, and then emboss the other half of the card. And just, um, I know the sailboat bundle is awesome, Nikki. Um, and just be careful, I'll show you when I do it, but just be careful to, um, to not like run over the part you already did. Or if you can avoid it, try not to um, run over the edge too much because the edge will make kind of a line on your card. But if you're going to emboss something longer and you have to like move the embossing folder, just add it into your design that you're going to, that's where the label goes or that's where a die cut goes or something like that. And you probably solved your problem. But what I thought would be neat to try, I love these. These were in the mini catalog and I am pretty certain that they carried over into the annual catalog. So this is the splatters and stripes. And they're just, they're both very rough, right? Like they're not even stripes but I love these two folders. Now these two folders are both the skinny ones, so they're meant for the mini, but they are the perfect size for a slim life, so I lost camera, perfect size for a slim line card. So here's what I decided. I'm putting flowers on this card. I had a whole bunch of die cuts and I thought, oh, this will work because then I can put lots of flowers on it. Um, but I thought I want to I want to emboss part of the card one way and part of the card another way. <laughs> so I don't want to do it half and half because that seems that seems too easy. I want to do two thirds of the card one way as well, totally the wrong place, and then do the bottom third another way. So <laughs> we're about to find out if what I think works work actually does work. So I'm going to emboss the top one. So this one, it doesn't matter. Um, we're just going to go to the end, right? And I can feel the ends coming. So instead of like clinking on the end, as soon as I feel like it's about to give, I'm going right back again. So I don't get that with any luck. I won't, I don't know, I have such a squeaky little machine. I won't get that hard line. Oh no, I did get a bit of a line, but that's okay. I'll likely cover it with the other one. So there's my first embossed one. Isn't this cool though? Splatters. I don't know, paint, wax, drippings. I don't know. It's just a cool texture, if you ask me. So you see, I did hit the line. I, I thought I stopped, but I didn't. So I did hit the line. So you have a pretty good crease there. Now, use that in your design or not. If you, if I was going to turn this, turn this folder around, and here is the key thing. Unless you are being very artistic, if you're going to do this, make sure. So this is raised, right? The part that's up. Make sure you put the embossing folder the right way the second time, because if you flip it over, you're going to end up with half going up and half going down. So don't do that. So make sure you, when you put it through the machine, the stamp it up logo is up, and when you switch it around and put it on the other side, the stamp it up logo is up. Now, if, if I was doing this all the same and I wanted to try to blend it and I didn't want that line, that's where you got to stop a little bit short, right? But in this case, I think it will be okay. I'm still going to try not to run over the edge of the card though. So in this case, I'm going to go like this, right? So I got the, uh, the Stampin' Up logo is up, so I have it going the right way. I'm going to overlap my design just a little because if, if the stripes go over top of where that other line is, that's good because it'll get rid of that very hard stop that was in there. So I'm going to go this way. I don't know if you guys know this for the mini, but if there's any paper sticking out, like as you try to put it in this way, it won't work. How about I put that way you can see it? Um, it won't work. 
right? If it's sticking out of the front of your, like when you make your sandwich, which would go like this, if the paper is sticking out the front, it's not going to work. So in this case, I got to flip it around, but that's fine because that's kind of what I want anyway, so I can control the end of it. Now I just knocked it, so we'll just fix that. So yeah, I've got about a quarter inch knocked over, and I should be able to be, tell by how much of the like of the embossing folders left where I want it to go. I love this little machine. Once you once you figure out what you can and can't do with it, this little guy is the best. So I'm just kind of looking at the side because I can see where it's going. So my roller is pretty much like hitting the center of the handle, right? So I'm just going to go like this, and now I'm close to the end. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> With any luck, I went far enough, but not so far that I made another big line. <clears throat> I kind of smooth the line. I probably could have gone farther, but that's okay because, like I said earlier, that's where you put your flowers. Okay, and the fact that these things fold up, sorry, that was probably really loud, is um, the handiest thing. It doesn't fit on my little trolley. Okay, so now, <clears throat> excuse me, apparently I've started puberty. Um, what did I do with my label? I had a label pre-cut. There we go. Um, so now I've got my emboss layer. And you can see the bottom bit is stripes and the top bit is this. Now I could have like half and half that I could have, I don't know, could have done whatever. I just thought this was fun. So you can have an embossed layer if you want. And like I said, you could have done them both the same. I just think this gives it a bit of texture and looks pretty cool. So this one, as soon as I figure out what I do with my tape. Uh, this one I am going to tape straight down. I know you're thinking Tracy's not using dimensionals, but the thing is um, I'm gonna use dimensionals on the flowers. <laughs> and because I folded that extra little layer over to put the money on it, or money in it, um, I don't want it to be super, super thick. So, and I did the same thing on here. I just went in, I just cut a, um, an eighth of an inch less than the original cut so that I would have just a little bit of a clean buffer. But there we go. So now instead of just having a flat white card, I have a cool textured card. Um, I realize now my label is too big. <laughs> so I, I make a plan, but that doesn't mean that that's the plan I stick with. So here's the other fun part. Um, dog hair everywhere. Um, I always have labels. Ooh, I love these labels. These are the ones that came with the hexagon and there's a couple little, I don't know if you can see the embossing. They're just odd shapes. Love them. I don't think that's what I want in here though. I think I'm going to go with the circle now that I realize the other one's too big. We'll keep that out for now. So this is, this is what I think I'm going to use. And then I have all these die cut flowers. So my plan was going to be to pop die cuts up. And, the, and these are the same thing. These are like good sized flowers and leaves. And I never seem to have enough. I want to put like a ton of these flowers on, but I always feel like, okay, my card's getting pretty full. I need to space it out a little. Uh, so I thought if I used this, <laughs> if I used uh, this card that I could put more on <laughs> because I had more, I had more landscape. And you know what? It's funny because I was gonna like fill the whole card, but now that I'm just this is how I this is how I roll. I just start laying things out. Um, but now that I see this, I kind of that's not the right leaves. I kind of think that I would rather just put them in the middle and actually leave like a bit here. So now this is, just go with it, right? I'll just change as I go. Need a little bit though. Because I'm gonna stamp on this and then I'm going to. <clears throat> And I'm going to pop it up on dimensional. So it's actually going to go above the flowers. Uh, and it will either have one of these cute little bows or two or three um, <laughs> that, that I cut out. Or I'm going to, are they cute though? You can layer them. Or I'm going to tie a bit of uh, my absolute favorite linen thread. But I do need, I'm going to put that there. I just want, yeah, a little bit of color underneath it. So it's not just so, so white on white. Um, I'm just trying to get a couple more different colors in here. Let's see, how many do I need? Um, again, 
Some people make a plan, some people just wing it. I am in the wing it category. Um, I do like these. I, I'm not normally a pastel person either. I tend to go for the bolder colors, but whichever DSP I cut these flowers for, um, I do like this, this kind of softer color scheme. I just feel like I need more of the blue. I was trying to do this the original time I, when I made these flowers. And I just, because this is the easy, I find the easiest way to do it. I just took a whole bunch of half sheets of cardstock and just cut a ton of flowers out. And then just, then they were always there and I could use whatever I wanted. But then I was trying to get to the point of, okay, so if it's on the same card, like this flower is this color, but now it's this color, does that make any sense? And I was totally overthinking the flowers. Um, so now I've, I've come to the conclusion that certain species of flower grows in different colors. So it is totally fine on the same card. Now I'm just trying to get the mix of flowers. There we go. Now I'm happy. I just need this blue one to go somewhere. There. So this is how this is going to go with my little circle. Da, da, da. Hold that up without dropping it. So see how many flowers I managed to put on there. I'm just uh, going to grab just a second here. I'm going to find a piece of cardstock that's already folded. I do not have one. Okay, so so this is a this is a regular size card base versus the slimline card base. So if I had tried to put all of these flowers on this same card base, um, they, they wouldn't all actually fit. Like one end or the other would have been peeking out, but it would have looked a lot more crowded on this card than it does on here. Cause on here, I still have enough white space. You can still see some of the embossing and seriously why I worried at all about that line, who knows? Cause you can't even see it at all. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to use the other thread because I got enough card stock on this card already. So uh, yes, at any given point, I get I get picked on, <laughs> lovingly picked on for how many die cuts I put on things. But like I said, I if I'm cutting flowers, I'm cutting enough flowers. I have containers and bags of extra spare pieces of all sorts of things on my desk at any given point, um, which is why I always get to put so many die cuts on my cards because I always have so many of them readily available. Okay, so. <laughs> I was going to try to make a card using this happy birthday, this big, huge font that comes in the ice cream set. Where did I put it? I don't know what it's called. Sweet ice cream? Sweet ice cream, because I love it, but I did not plan that well. Actually, that's not true. Here I go, changing my mind again. Let's see if this works. So you know that piece of cardstock that we, that we uh, cut off? Hello, Mary. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try something because, like I said, why plan ahead? Oh, I apologize, Mary. You came in just in time for me to tease you, and I and I did not intentionally do it. But here's my little mini cutter <laughs> that I love. So this is three and a three and a half or three and a quarter, depending which one I want to end on. Oh, I can end on three and a quarter. Nope, three and a half. It's Okay, so the width of the card is three and a half. The width of the layer is three and a quarter, but it'll work either way I do it. Three quarters is going to be big enough. Nope, one inch. Of course, this probably would have been a good idea if I'd stamped it straight. So here, let's do it this way. And then I will fix it on the second cut because I did not stamp it straight. <laughs> now I have a one inch bar. So let's see. <laughs> let's see, wing it. Yes, I have an entire pile of labels, but hey, how about we use something else? Oh, you know what else I just realized? I need some more dark leaves. I can't just put one thing with dark leaves on there. I gotta get some dark leaves on the top. It's funny. Those on. I'm just gonna squish these guys up a little bit. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I am I, my maniacal laugh that I get there because I'm just so happy with myself that I solved my own problem. There we are. 
So now, so I'll have those sticking out the other way. So now I'm gonna, now I just have to pop these up and you know, put on some jewels and such, but I'm going to, I'm gonna put them this way. I'm gonna, I, need, like I said, I needed some more dark green leaves up here because it looks funny just having them down there. Ta-da. So I, I'm not gonna make you watch me do this because I, I know me and I'm gonna move them 27 times before I finally glue them down. Um, Oh, love it. Okay, so I'm not really a flower person until I see your cards. Oh, thank you very much. You know, it's funny. I the I see the flower cards, um, the renun ranunculus, and uh, what's the other one? The flowing flowers, where they're such pretty, um, like uh, distinctive. The distinctive flowers are super pretty, and they're. Um, and I just look at him and I'm like, oh, those are so nice. But I, I have a hard time designing with him because they look nice for other people. <laughs> I am more of a flower child type hippie card. So these particular flowers, which these dyes are retiring, but I, I doubt I will ever part with them. Um, this kind of flower or wildflowers and like daisies and stuff, those I can totally get, I can get on board with. The, the super fancy like, you know, roses and eh, not so much. But there we go. These flowers, I'm liking um, so yeah, I'm just going to pop some of them up, glue them down, do the whole thing. I'm also going to restamp this happy birthday because you see this tiny little bit of the Y that's not good. Yep. <laughs> Didn't make quality control. So there we go. Happy birthday. I mean, I'll probably put a couple on the inside. So when I do my blog, you'll get to see the final pictures, but there you go. You get the idea. If you're trying to cram a lot onto one card, this is the way to go. Um, I, I convinced myself that I was ending at 645. So I had time to get ready for seven o'clock. Um, here we go, just to give you a sneak peek of the final version. Like I said, I love, 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 love linen thread. I love the long trains on linen thread. Um, so I might have to double this. Cut that piece a little long. Hmm. We'll just double that. Make it into this one. The, um, the only trick with doubling it, it looks so much better doubled. But if you don't get, if you don't work with the twists that are are there naturally from being on the roll, um, it just fights with you the whole time. Okay, there we go. I like I like once you're done though, and you get these nice little twists. Okay, I have to redo that. That's totally totally crooked. Okay, but there you go. You get the idea. <laughs> That'll be down there somewhere. Okay, so that will be my bow. Ta -da. <laughs> so there's my slimline card, you know, rambling for you. Um, when you want to put lots of stuff on and you don't want it to look crowded, when you want to make big pictures, again, just so they're not so crowded, money card with the little slot there. Um, and you notice, so the envelopes come in soft succulent, smoky slate, and whisper white. This paper that comes with the sports package, which I adore, um, I'm a little tassel, uh, is actually more very vanilla than it is white. So I didn't want to put this in the white, so I just used the gray one. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's close enough. So I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, you, and I didn't stamp on that one, but I will. Um, oh, oops, that goes with this one. So there's another money one. And this is, again, simple. You, didn't, you don't have to put a whole lot on it. But that makes a nice little money pocket as well. And then this one with the six inch, six inch, yeah, six inch. I was going to say six feet again. The six foot, there I did it. The six inch uh, DSP and just a little bit of extra thing. And again, I'm going to cheat. Lena Gursa, who designed this card, and I basically copied everything except for I put a different label on it. Um, and it's just gorgeous. So there's all your ideas. And this one is not a money card, it is just a cool card that will fit the piece of paper in it that needs to go in it. So there you go. I think you should try them. Um, I think the, if you wanted to make like a slightly smaller version to make your own DSP, that'd be cool too. Or your own DSP, your own envelope out of DSP, that'd be cool too. But now that they've come up with these pretty little envelopes, um, I'm just gonna make them this size. And it, like I said, it's basically a sheet of paper. Um, with a, an extra little layer and lots of room for your artistic canvas.
So the horizon one, yeah, isn't that? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Nikki. For very, very, uh, very nice feedback on the cards. Yeah, this one, I wish I could claim it's so gorgeous, but that's Lena's. The other ones are mine. But, uh, but yeah, fun cards. And then this one is just strikingly dramatic. Um, and this one, which I mean, because I have to do it all anyways, I'll just do that. Uh, like I said, we made this one so it opened sideways. I will, I'm going to put some flowers along here, but this also holds money, even vertical. You can still make it into a money card. Uh, and embossed background. So there you go. Thank you guys all for joining me. I'm going to see if I can do this without scooping them all onto the floor. There we go. Abstract art. <laughs> I will post the finished one. I will do it here, and uh, it'll be posted very shortly with the link to the video. So. There you go. And then, yeah, all the dimensions and everything of all the different layers so you know what they are um, and the folds and everything will be on my blog on Saturday. Thank you guys for uh, joining me. I hope I will see you. I was supposed to mention um, I am the TN of the TNT. So hopefully you will you will stay tuned for the second T uh, coming up at seven o'clock. Um, Tamara and I have decided that if if we're gonna if we're gonna keep doing things together, we should come up with a new name. And so we're, right now it's TNT is what we're tossing around. So because uh, whatever we do is gonna be done all night. For those of you old enough to remember that reference. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Have a great night, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.